Hello, this is Dr. John Bennett broadcasting from uh, Miami in the afternoon. Uh, today we have the uh, honor of having uh, Slavon Goldskovic. Uh, he's a third year medical student from uh, University of Croatia uh, in Zagreb. And today he's going to talk about the far lateral approach in, in neurosurgery. So uh, w welcome, Slavon. Could you please uh, introduce yourself and tell what you're doing and then go mm -hmm. on to your presentation, please. Uh, thank you very much. My name is Slavin Gojković. I'm uh, a medical student at the University of Zagreb in Croatia. I'm also uh, now, as you can see on my right, on my left, uh, I became an associate editor at Mitchell and the logo of, of the student society I met uh, in my uh, medical school. So uh, what we're trying to do there in Zagreb is uh, to uh, bring up together students who are interested in neurosurgery and provide them with the means of looking at uh, the operations, visiting the ORs that we have. And it was a great collaboration so far. So uh, this presentation I'm going to give is uh, a bit of uh, kind of a presentation that we perform in Zagreb. Uh, all those presentations were performed by me, and uh, my sole intention was to uh, try to put some neurosurgical themes uh, into the curriculum of the medical school we have there. So uh, I will I will also try to tell you some experiences I have from the. Uh, Leitch Hospital and other uh, great institutions we have in Zagreb, where I've used, uh, I had the honor to do more, much surgeries and uh, sometimes assist with some uh, insignificant parts of it. So, I'll try to still share my presentation to start off. Uh, I hope you can see this. Uh, yes. yes, we can see okay. it. Great. Okay, so... Uh, hello? Hello? Yes, I can hear you. I'm just on mute. Oh. All right, all right. Thank you. Okay, so... Um, I'll go to the part of the presentation that we saw yesterday. Maybe just to rewind... Uh, this is the, the poster I've, I've been using for our Rotten course. I call it Rotten Cranial Anatomy and Surgical Approaches course at the University of Zagreb. And uh, this was a poster that uh, kind of made us uh, available for participation of neurosurgical residents and neurosurgeons. Some professors from Zagreb also had very, very great comments on, uh, on the, the, our, our intentions and they offered uh, their assistance uh, in means to provide us with visiting their wards, operated theaters, and so on. So it, it was really gratifying, and I'm really, I really want to express my gratitude to them, as well as to the Neurosurgical TV and great Dr. Bennett for being here. So uh, uh, this was a theme that I talked about yesterday, far lateral approach. I'll just use this, uh, as I call it, the clock of uh, skull based approaches to show you the approach we're going to go through now. So if we go in front, that's transclival, anterior petrosal leads us to the uh, anterior lateral part, then uh, posterior lateral part, posterior petrosal approach, transtemporal retinal sigmoid, and then far lateral. This is the approach we're going to talk today. Um, as you will see, it can be modified into transcondyl, but this is not the case in, in classical far lateral approach. So, classical far lateral approach is going to the condyle, but not through it. So, you don't uh, drill into condyle, you don't remove it. And uh, the basic midline approach, a suboccipital approach, which I mentioned yesterday. So, we went to draw all this anatomy. This is just uh, another review of a quick review of the anatomy of the posterior fossa. You can find this at the presentation I made at this same conference yesterday. Um, and then the telovelar approach, which we also discussed. Now, uh, going to the far lateral approach and uh, jugular foramen. So, 
if we consider far lateral approach, uh, we should uh, take into our minds that uh, it it is usually consists of three stages. So the first thing. Excuse me, Slavin. Your first, your second slide's on. Is that the one you want? Uh, second slide. Uh, is it saying far lateral approach in juggler foramen? Okay. So it's on, you're on the second slide. Is I, I think you want a different slide up there. Just, just a second. Uh, does it say the far lateral approach in juggler foramen? It just these words. Okay. So you want the second slide up? That's all it is. Uh, no, no, I want the slide. I'm on the slide that says the far lateral approach. In okay, no, okay, you're not on that slide. You're gonna have to change, change uh -huh. it a little bit. Okay. Yeah, okay. okay. Just, yeah, yeah, okay. yeah, there we go. The far lateral approach and jugular foramen. That's okay, so if I go, uh, if I put it up, is it on now? Now, now the second slide's on. The first slide is on the, the introduction, the fo uh, rotund cranial anatomy. Yeah, yeah. Now the far lateral approach and jugular yeah. foramen is on. Yeah, let let me try. I don't know. Well, maybe I can. Do it, uh, although I haven't removed this. Uh, just just a sec. Can you see this okay. one on? Okay, I see the second. The first slide is on again. Uh, the first slide. Yeah. I don't know what's the problem. And, um, now, and now the subtemporal transpetrosal. Yeah. yeah, yeah, that's that's okay, but uh, I have this problem. Okay. okay. Uh, you know, you know, I'm, I know what I'm going to do. I'm just going to pass through this anatomy uh, on on pictures I have. So. Okay. Uh, okay. I think I'll, I'll manage it. Okay. Uh, okay. I'll just open this up. Uh, Finding my file here. All right. No, it's not not too many pictures, so okay. you'll be able to do. Okay. So uh, as I was saying, uh, we will now go to the far far lateral far lateral approach, mm -hmm. juggler foramen. So uh, this approach, as we can say, uh, we can see this in in all approaches basically. But uh, this approach has three important steps. First step is the muscular stage. So this is the stage where you dissect the muscles of the uh, back of the neck. Mm -hmm. And you go to the occipital bone, and then you go uh, into uh, the intracranial space. Second stage is the extradural stage, where you need to uh, actually approach the dura, uh, do a craniotomy, cut the bone, and then uh, finally get to the surface of the dura. And then the intradural space, uh, intradural stage, at which you can really uh do the intracranial part of neurosurgery so a slide uh leading us through this uh, these slides are are viewed usually in 3d but now for the purposes of of uh, not having the 3d glasses most of our of, of our panel and then the viewers uh, i'll do it 2d so uh, this is again an overview of approaches we've been through this so subtemporal Transpetrosal, these are transtemporal approaches. You can see this in another presentation I made before at the neurosurgical TV. And then retrosigmoid far lateral. So far lateral is kind of the approach that's medial to retrosigmoid, but lateral. Far lateral from suboccipital. That's where it got its name. So right next to the condyle, med medial to it. Okay, now anatomy i'll open my slides like this um okay uh i will need uh, your help now again do you see this picture it's uh, it's like a head with with uh, curve on it no we we'll see the it's the first slide of the presentation first slide of the presentation so you don't see the picture no all right i have to uh try to screen share this all right uh, just a second i'll try this again uh now no let's see just the first no. slide okay okay I'll, I'll go out of it and then go into it again i'll, I'll shorten now my see anatomy anatomy yeah yeah uh, yeah, so, well, yeah come yeah reboot just come back in 
Okay, okay. Screen share. Okay, now uh, you see this? No, no, no. You you just see yourself, don't don't you? Yeah, I just see myself. Yeah. Okay. Uh, trying another one. Uh, putting this up. Yeah. Okay. So this should work. Okay, you see this head now? Yeah, uh, yeah I see the head. Um, okay, so um, so in this far lateral approach, uh, we are going uh, retro auricular, so behind the auricula, and we draw uh, a curve that extends from the neck up to the temporal part of the, of the head. So this Stages, stages of this, we will just go through this uh, basic skin incision. So, when you start opening this wound, uh, you need to move the skin and then come to the superficial muscles. We, we will go through this in more detail uh, just after this slide. So, this is the sternocleidomastoid muscle, which is being retracted here, and other deep muscles of the neck. So, uh, you just retract it to both sides, and this is the vascular and muscular anatomy of the neck. And then going on, uh, we, we see, uh, just proceeding this approach, and coming to the part that's interesting us. So, uh, as I said uh, yesterday, I didn't really go into detail of the anatomy of the muscles. Uh, of the back of the neck, but I'll just quickly review these muscles. This is uh, one of the questions frequently asked by all the neurosurgeons. So this is the trapezius muscle here. Uh, as you can see, it, it uh, attaches to the uh, linea nuchae. That's the nuchal line uh, on the back of the neck. And uh, this is the sternocleidomastoid muscle here attaching to the superior uh, occipital line here. Then, as we remove these muscles, I just didn't mention this is the spinous capitis here. And as we remove them, we come to the deepest part of the muscles of the neck. So, uh, we usually like to ask these questions, but uh, in surgery, it doesn't really matter. You just uh, remove all of these muscles. Uh, in complete parts, so you don't remove them layer by layer. Uh, we can see that there are at least two layers of muscles on the back of the neck, but it's usually, it's usually done uh, at one time. So you remove everything because it's such, so much easier to close. Okay, so another slide of these spinous capitis muscles, and uh, finally to the deepest part. So this is the rectus capitis posterior minor, rectus capitis posterior major, and two interesting muscles, these are the oblique muscles, superior oblique, inferior oblique, and um, it's usually, uh, it's usually nice to, to remember these muscles, the most deepest layer, because I remember one situation that large hospital in Zagreb, uh, one, one of the attending surgeons was doing the operation, and came up to this muscle I'm, I'm pointing. Uh, that's the uh, rectus capitis posterior uh, minor, and uh, he thought it was an atlantoxytical membrane. So when, when he really started dissecting it, I told him, well, that doesn't look like a membrane, it's probably muscle. So it's really easy to confuse this. And if you dissect this, you can see here the atlantoxytical membrane. And uh, a very important vascular relationship here. So uh, one of the, the toughest parts of facing this anatomy is uh, not to occlude or dissect any of the art arteries that pass here. And this is a very, very, very vascularized area. So this is the vertebral artery that courses to the, from the lateral process of the atlas and goes to the foramen magnum 
to uh, bind together with a contralateral vertebral artery into the basilar artery and then giving some branches. Uh, I would just like to point your attention to this little artery here. So, uh, this branch is very important because it can often be confused with the extradural origin of the pica. Pica is the posterior inferior cere cerebellar artery. So if you cut this or coagulate this, you will get an infarction of the cerebellum and posterior part of the medulla oblongata. So usually uh, the artery that goes this, this way is just the meningeal branch. It is, it is usually sacrificed. But in 10% of cases, it's the extradural origin of pica. And I really want to kind of emphasize this because uh, that was one of the things that Professor Rotten really tried to, to get into the minds of his listeners. And I, I kind of took it personally <laughs> in my studying. So, okay. And uh, now, during the craniotomy, uh, you should always try to do the craniotomy as, as vast as you can. So, just open for this. Uh, you can even, uh, usually, the, the C1 is dissected. Laminectomy is done, or hemilaminectomy, and you can also do a C2 laminectomy if you need the broader approach. So you can see the dura here, uh, these are the sinuses of the posterior fossa, vertebral artery, and okay, moving on. You open the dura with, uh, <laughs> with, with really uh, the care taken not, not to injure the structures lying underneath. So you can do a sharp opening of this, but this is usually done. Uh, in this picture, the scalpel is shown, but it is usually done with, with scissors. So uh, you, you open it really, really uh, carefully. And this is the arachnoid over here. You just retract these structures, and then you're in. So we are finishing here the extradural stage of our approach. We went through the muscular, extradural, and now to the interdural one. So and when we go now, I would like to just to remember uh, in a moment uh, pres the great presentation Victor uh, Volovich done yesterday about the, the anatomy. And uh, these are really the wonders of the anatomy you can face. The posterior fossa is uh, the most uh, most complex area of the intracranial anatomy. And this tells you why. Uh, you see the vertebral artery here arising from the C1 transverse uh, foramen. Then going here medially, uh, cerebellum surfaces, uh, branches, this might be the, the, the pica over here uh, crossing around the suboccipital uh, space of the cerebellum and the cranial nerves. So these are all the cranial nerves that's, that are going to the uh, jugular foramen, so uh, 10, 11, and uh, 9. And also 12, 12 is going through the hypoglossal canal, it's medial, okay. So now, as we proceed, uh, we retract the cerebellum, uh, that's usually medial and upwards, and uh, reveal the CPA here. So this is kind of the area I talked about yesterday, so I won't go into too much detail here, but you can see this anatomy uh, at my yesterday's presentation. You, you will just find here the proposal surface of the cerebellum, the seventh and eighth nerve uh, going to the uh, internal acoustic meatus, and uh, of course, uh, going moving upwards, uh, trigeminal nerve, uh, who is in close relationship to the SA, as I mentioned. And now revealing uh, all the, the uh, possibilities of approaching the neck region. So, um, in this picture, you can see that uh, condyle has probably been removed. Uh, this is not usually done in the classic far lateral approach. So, in the classic far, far lateral approach, you just go to the condyle and don't remove it. But uh, if you want to do some extensions, uh, perhaps if uh, the tumor has invaded other structures and you need to go through the condyle, the, those are extensions of the far lateral approach. So basic far lateral approach is done to the condyle and uh, paracondylar, so, uh, transcondylar uh, extensions can be made if you need to modify your, your approach. Okay, so uh, this is just the medulla and this one 
this is in honor of Professor Rotten again. Uh, he used to ask uh, his panel, what's this structure here? And you won't believe it, it's the uh, extra dural origin of pica, I'm, I'm sure here. So you can see how it goes to the suboccipital surface of the server. So all this area will be infarcted if you occlude this one. And uh, another review of the midline anatomy, so C1, medulla, uh, tonsils of the cerebellum, cerebellar surfaces, suboccipital surface here, and all these nice, nice uh, curves of the arteries are just branches of the pica. Vertebral nerves, this is the first uh, cervical nerve that goes uh, horizontally and parallel to the vertebral artery and uh, extend it to the jugular foramen. And here, a nice view of the sinuses. This is the jugular bulb. So we're very close to the jugular foramen here. Uh, and uh, one thing that may be, um, might be pointed out here, a uh, far lateral approach is uh, the approach that's, that's um, go getting you to the lateral uh, jugular foramen. And I will talk about the indications in just a moment for this approach, but uh, it's usually done for, uh, the, uh, for the areas you cannot access through the classic midline or suboccipital approach. Or uh, retrosigmoid approach is a kind of a keyhole approach if you do it through a small hole. So uh, this approach is really uh, nice for lesions in the very ant anterior lateral part of the CP angle. Okay, so I think we're done with our Pictures here. Uh, let's just go to the uh, back to the presentation. I hope you can still see this. Um, okay, so uh, I will now open my presentation again. Uh, you just uh, please tell me, Dr. Bennett, if if you can uh, see the slides now. Okay, anatomy. I see. All right, all right. That's that's all right. So uh, you see this when to use this approach? Yes. Okay, great. So uh, these are just the indications of our anatomy. Now we're going to talk about uh, brain tumors a bit because this is a conference of brain tumors. So uh, as I always want to uh, point out, meningiomas can occur in this area. So meningiomas of the posterior fossa are very curious. We had a great discussion on MedShare, a network on medical cases about the meningiomas of the fourth ventricle. So, believe it or not, this is a meningioma. Uh, we can see here uh, its dural origin. Uh, this is the connection it has. So, all meningiomas have this connection with the dura, like a little tail that connects them. So, uh, these tumors can occur here and can cause significant damage. And, and, and as a great educator, Dr. Alfredo Quinones Quinojosa from uh, the John Hopkins uh, mentioned, uh, these are benign tumors. But uh, he always asks, is this benign? <laughs> if it compresses the brainstem, if, if it compresses the cerebellum, it, it really isn't benign. So, these tumors are a great threat and uh, they, they can go fast and cause significant damage. Um, another uh, important things are pica aneurysms. Uh, I talked a lot about pica, posterior inferior cerebellar artery, and uh, aneurysms are really common here and sometimes they are very hard to approach. So th this is uh, really one of the pathologies where the transcondylar paracondylar extensions come into play. So you can always use this knowledge, uh, drill into condyle. And another thing I didn't mention, uh, condyles should be uh, uh, left, uh, should be kept and not touched uh, in cases where there is <coughs> cranio-vertebral cranio instability. So in children who, who don't have this uh, stability of, of the neck, uh, condyles should be preserved. And another picture, schwannomas, C1 schwannomas are common as well as the acoustic neuromas or schwannomas of the vestibular cochlear nerve, uh, which are usually done through the, uh, uh, through the retrosigmoid approach. But uh, you saw the C1 nerve, first cervical nerve, so this nerve 
if it has a schwannoma, uh, it's important to know that you can do it through this approach. Uh, other one C2 schwannomas, you can always extend it, do a hem hemilaminectomy and go down. Right. And I'm just uh, going very, uh, moving very close to my finishing uh, of the presentation. So here are just other uh, pathologies. You can find neuroenteric cysts, which can be suctioned away. Then chordomas, uh, fatty tumors that can appear here. Also dermoid cysts and other fatty lesions. And finally, dural arteriovenous fistula so uh, this is uh, an important pathology because it's a shunt between uh, the arterial system and the venous system so it can cause passive infarctions maybe in some cases and it's really but so and, and now uh, just another uh, thing if we have the time i would just like to show you a brief video on how this approach is done so uh, I, I also want to show you this great resource. If you type NOC uh, into YouTube, AANS NOC, uh, this is kind of a homage and, and uh, in honor of the ANS and their uh, kindness in, in providing all these videos. You can find all of them on their website, uh, the ANS or on YouTube, and uh, these are great resource videos. So I'll just run through this and uh, show you how it's done if you have the time dr bennett okay uh, we have okay so for approach uh another important thing to say this approach has some uh it's uh, kind of hard to determine which position of the patient is, is the best one in doing this surgery because um, uh, this is the the park bench uh, position that's uh, showed here uh, it is the position that's recommended by Professor Rotten also, and uh, it's the most most usually it's done in this way because uh, this uh, in the, in the randomized studies of many patients they pro they've proven that uh, the least cases of uh, of air embolisms of cured in when using this approach. So this this approach is very useful in these cases. A patient should always be all points of pressure should be closely packed uh, so not to be injured and the the cubitus to occur. this is just the pen uh, the clamp placement this patient is really nicely packed and this is an overview of this positioning okay so you see a patient is kindly all, all wrapped up shaving preparing for surgery so and this is the incision i showed you so behind the auricular retro retro auricular and cutting the skin so after this uh, drapes are placed and uh, as uh, dr oro uh, mentioned in his great lecture wonderful lecture on carrier malformation skin should be covered because skin is the the, the place where infections come from so uh, really a surgeon should should have this in mind and and it was a great thing f for me to learn from his presentation and opening is done uh with sharp dissection first scalpel then cutting cutting the tissue no don't know what's this about and then proceeding forward we're just uh, cutting these superficial layers and proceeding to our muscular stage of the approach uh, this is just the review sternocleidomastoid muscle, which I spoke before. These are the some sub mandibular muscles and some important landmarks. So the asterion is here. Asterion is the point where the, uh, where the sinuses uh, connect, a uh, lateral point, and the inion that is the uh, occipital protuberance, ex uh, external occipital protuberance. So if you use, ex uh, use these two uh, landmarks, uh, asterion and uh, inion, you should be fine. Uh, most uh, incisions are determined in this way. Okay, so this is the removing of, of muscle adhesions, removing of the sternocleidomastoid muscle. Okay. 
extending our approach, cutting all the muscles that uh, are removing it. Uh, this is a, a nice surgery, very interesting because of the uh, of the anatomy that's here and a wide number of dissections that should be done. So this is, uh, we see here a monopolar cautery. This is probably one of the best methods to do this. Vertebral artery and its course, so you should always take care not, not to injure the vertebral artery coursing around here. And uh, that's really, really, um, I don't know if, if that happens anymore, but I know that Viktor Volovich uh, said about one case, uh, they did uh, the anterior fossa and uh, no middle fossa and they uh, they had uh, uh, injured i don't know if it, that's his thing but but he shared the experience of injuring the carotid artery so you should really be careful this is this is c1 c2 occipital bone and just extension of this approach uh, and now to the craniotomy this might be called the bony stage after we removed all the muscles, we come to the bone and uh, a nice white craniotomy should be performed as you saw earlier. Now just, just proceeding with this, uh, this is a bone drill that's, that's being used here, suctioning and okay, moving forward. Just, just doing this craniotomy in this very, very fine video. Sigmoid sinus, so at the junction of the sigmoid and transverse sinus is the asterion. So this is a common knowledge of anatomy of the posterior fossa. So you can uh, just imagine this uh, at the lateral part of the lower portion of the occipital bone. Or we can say at the place where the superior uh, nuchal line is. So you can orient always yourself by, by palpation and by these structures and then uh, we are going to the dural opening as i mentioned before so we will see how they are doing this here but i i don't think that they're doing it with, with the scalpel and that's too dangerous to do and now uh, this is also a point where surgical mic should be taken in okay so going on this is a microscopic view seeing the nerves and finally uh, putting some some uh, cottonoids to remove bleeding and now going to the CP angle so this is the the most wondrous part of brain surgery and uh, really under high high power surgical microscope it really looks like traveling through the space so our astronauts here dr. Bennett who's really doing a great job for neurosurgical community is, uh, <laughs> is really well, fine, fine with us. You know, looking at that tissue makes me hungry. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, you, well, you know, Slavin, we have to wrap it up if you don't mind. I'm sorry. To uh, all short. right. Let me just uh, to finish up. Okay. Okay. So okay. Very good. We've done this, we close the dura uh, in the same fashion and this and this uh, thanks to goes to the, the neurosurgical only curriculum. And I just want to say, going out to the screen share, uh, just just a second, uh, that uh, I'm, I'm really thankful uh, for being here. I uh, had some technical issues, but it's really a great pleasure to present here and thanks once again. Everything. That's okay, Slavin. Uh, we've all had technical issues. Uh, there's lots of confusion about time, and this is not a perfect tech, but we're getting better, and we'll keep rolling on. Yes, thank it's it's, it's wonderful, you. Dr. Bennett, and thank you for all the things that you've done so okay. far. And, okay. And... So, Slavin, thank you, and I hope you hang around for the next hangout. Thank you. I also hope.